Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com, and today I'm going to give you your first electric guitar lesson. I myself started out on electric guitar, so I have a lot of great stuff to share with you. Really quick before we get started, there's a free ebook. It's completely free for all my subscribers, and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you in this video today comes straight from there. So please grab it. That way you'll have something to follow along with and kind of keep you on track. Also, if you enjoy learning guitar with me, please take a moment to subscribe. I sincerely appreciate those of you that do. Now, with no further ado, let's get down to it. Generally, when you begin playing electric guitar, you're going to want to accomplish three things. You're going to want to learn your first riff. You're going to want to learn how to start playing some simple rhythm parts. And you're going to want to learn to play some sort of lead or melody. Those are the three basic roles that you'll be fulfilling when you're playing songs, when you're jamming with other musicians, when you're writing music, whatever it is that you want to do on guitar, those three elements are going to be there. We'll start with the riff, the most common one, it's basically a joke at this point, is to learn Smoke on the Water. In fact, I asked ChatGPT, what are some easy riffs for beginners on electric guitar? And Smoke on the Water came up twice. I'm not making this up. I'm honestly kind of hesitant to teach this one, but it's such a great riff to learn for beginners because it does teach us a couple things about hand positioning that are going to be essential. And you'll be able to immediately utilize the skills that I'm going to teach you. And you're going to be able to use them to learn the riff of your choosing. We're going to start by holding our pick. I like to grip it like this. So I have my hand out and I'm going to curl my fingers. I'm going to put my pick on top of my finger and put my thumb down on it. It's sticking sideways out of my thumb like that. As far as figuring out how much to stick out, you just try strumming the guitar. If your finger is rubbing the strings instead of your pick, you got to curl it in more. If it's out too far, you'll feel like it's going to fall out kind of want to have it sucked in as much as possible without your fingers rubbing the strings. And we're going to pick the D string. The names of the strings from thickest to thinnest. E, A, D, G, B, E. And I wouldn't worry too hard about memorizing them right away. You're inevitably going to learn them as you learn guitar, because as you watch lessons, people like me are going to say, on the G string, we're going to play this or that, you know, but a really quick way to get started is to use a mnemonic device. I like Eddie, eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie. So you know the word Eddie starts with E, that's the E string, and you just go through the strings like that. Eddie, eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie. You know, do it like five times in a row, once this whole week. You'll have it memorized by the end of the week, no problem. Anyways, we're starting on the D string. Eddie, eight, dynamite, that's the third thickest string. And we're just gonna pluck that string open. Open means we're not pressing anything. And at this point, there's a chance that your guitar is kind of slipping away from you. The neck is down, you know, we're not holding it correctly. And with acoustic, it's pretty straight up. Most acoustics are the exact same shape. So I have some ground rules, but with electric guitar, there's a bunch of different shapes. So the trick that I want to share with you, that's going to make your guitar in the correct position is to put on a strap. Ta-da! And to make sure that your strap is adjusted correctly, you just stand up sit down and make sure that it doesn't move, that it doesn't go up or down as you do that. You keep adjusting it until it's in the exact same spot. Um, and you want the neck to be tilting upward. That way you can reach the frets without bending your wrist. You know, if your wrist is bending like that, you're going to develop tendonitis. You want it to be a little bit bent. You know, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but not crazy. If the guitar is too low, it's not very good. And if it's too high here, it kind of like stresses out your arm when you're strumming. So you find the spot that works well for you and keep adjusting your strap until it's good. Now back to plucking the D string, the third thickest string. We're just going to give it a little pluck. We're going down, but we're also coming out a little bit. We keep making like a little circle and the side of the circle is where you contact the string. And that's your goal for now. Just pluck that single string without getting the strings beside it. Oh no, you know, you, you just, and you just make, making repetitive motions is how you build up muscle memory and how you get good. And once we're feeling pretty good about plucking that open D string, we can fret one of the notes on guitar. So I'm going to take my chord hand or my fretting hand, and I'm going to press the tip of my index finger anywhere on the D string wherever it feels comfortable. And your goal is to have a fairly neutral wrist. You know, you don't want it to be bending too far one way or the other. Putting your elbow out, your shoulder back, you know, 
those are things that are going to make it easier to press the frets P paying attention to that whole system you know because it, it creates a support system the pressure isn't just coming from your fingers it's coming from everything your back your core you know and one of the key elements is having your thumb in a good spot just take the guitar out of it for a sec you want to take your finger and press it into the pad of your thumb and now when we put the guitar neck in the way you're still trying to press your finger to the pad of your thumb there's just some you know strings in the way right and a good rule of thumb is to keep your thumb upright you don't want to let it trail off to the sides that's going to create a whole bunch of issues and now that we have some basic technique let's figure out exactly where to put our fingers so that we can play a note the fretboard is divided into frets you press down between the frets this first box is the first fret then there's the second fret the third fret and so on and we're going to press the third fret of the d string e a d one two three with our index finger and we want to press as close to the fret as possible to get the clearest sound and we just pluck the string and then we're going to go up to the fifth fret using our index finger so we just slide up our finger and our thumb goes along for the ride remember our thumb is behind the fifth fret and we pluck that pressing as close to the fret as possible and then we can try those three notes in a row the open string the third fret and then the fifth fret and we could write that down o three five we play that a few times and now i want to change something we're going to put our index finger on the third fret like we just did but we're going to move our thumb over so now it's behind the fourth fret and then we're going to put our ring finger on the fifth fret of that same string so we're pressing the same spots but we're using our index and our ring finger and our thumb is splitting the difference between those two fingers we might have to put your elbow in might have to tip your neck up you know if your guitar is tilting like this and you're looking at your fingers you're going to lose reach you're going to stress out your wrist your guitar is aiming forward you know and everything's feeling pretty good and you can go oh three five if you're having trouble reaching that a good trick is to think about where your knuckles are if your hands like this and your knuckles are behind the neck your fingers feel so short but when you put your knuckles forward in front of the fretboard your fingers suddenly feel much longer it's much easier to reach and when we play it this way we don't have to slide our hand around it's so much more efficient and ergonomic oh three five and another thing to keep in mind is that as we press down our ring finger we're not going to let our index come up it needs to stay down that's another part of playing guitar not only efficiently but making it sound a lot better you just got to trust me on this one now at this point we have a very basic riff and you have the basic technique down in order to play it but if you start looking up your favorite riffs online they're going to be written using what's called tab and to read tab is really simple just take a look at the top of the screen you have six lines the bottom line is your thickest string because when you look down at your guitar like this that's the one on the bottom and the top line that's your thinnest string and the numbers are the frets so what we were just playing looks like this so we're on the d string the third thickest string remember the thickest strings at the bottom and we played zero three five zero means open three is the third fret five is the fifth fret and that is your first riff next we need to learn how to play rhythm because as fun as it is to be the guy who takes the awesome guitar solo a lot of the time you're going to be playing rhythm parts and on electric guitar there's this really cool trick where you can play one shape and move it all around the fretboard the shape is called the power chord and going back to that chat gpt list i can tell you right now seven nation army iron man i love rock and roll you really got me those all primarily use the power chord to play it i'm going to put my index finger down on the third fret of the thickest string then i'm going to put my ring finger on the fifth fret of the a string that's the next thickest one and then i'm going to put my pinky right underneath that on the third fret of the d string and your thumb should be behind the fourth fret maybe a little closer to the index kind of balancing it all out remember to get your knuckles forward get those fingers feeling nice and long and for strumming this we're just going to make our little circles and i'm just aiming 
for the thickest string and making a bit of a bigger circle, and I end up getting the E and A strings. That one's there just for insurance. Sometimes it comes out. And we gotta count this out. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. And we could even get a metronome going at this point. I have it set to 60 beats per minute. One, and two, and three, and four. The metronome clicks on the numbers only. So you just count out loud. One, and two, and three, and four, and... And we can take this shape and we can move it around and play it in different spots on the fretboard. A really good song that I like to do this with is Only in Dreams by Weezer. So we start with our power chord shape, the one we were just playing, and we just slide it up till our index finger's on the sixth fret of the thickest string. Our ring finger's on the eighth fret of the next one. Our pinky is just underneath that. You know, the whole shape moves together, and we just go one and two and downstrokes only, just counting along. And then we take the shape and we move it to the next string. So now my index is on the A string, my ring finger is on the D string, and my pinky's just underneath that on the G string. It's making the same shape, but it's really important that my index is resting under the thickest string. So it's lightly touching the underside of it. That way when I pluck the string, it's not gonna make a note. If we don't do it, it sounds like this, that sounds rough. But we mute it, it sounds pretty good. And we're just gonna do more downstrokes. Three and four. So we start off one and two and three and four and. And as I said before, repetitive practice builds muscle memory. Persistence is key. So you keep doing that, trying to move that shape as quickly as you can. And a huge tip here, even if you can't move the shape in time, is to keep the rhythm going. You know, even if it's like a little bit late, it still sounds better when you keep the rhythm going. Anyways, moving on, from here, we're gonna go back to the thickest string at the fourth fret, keeping the same shape, and we go one and two and, and then we're gonna slide our shape until our index finger is at the ninth fret. Three and, and then seventh fret, four and. So once again, I would practice that. One and two and three and four. And notice as I slide, I'm lifting my fingers just a little bit, just so I don't make those squeaky sounds. And this isn't something that you're gonna be able to immediately play like in two seconds, you know? But if you practice this, even for like 10, 20 minutes, maybe it takes a day or two, I guarantee that you will have it together sooner than you think. And if you grab that ebook that I mentioned, you'll notice that there's a page that shows you all the notes on the E and A strings. And this is useful because you can look up the chords in any song. I mean, any song. For instance, let's say you wanna play Wish You Were Here. You can just see the chords here. You find the root notes using that chart, and then you just practice playing the root notes with your index. So, so you think you can tell Heaven from hell Blue skies from pain You know, I just looked at the chords C, D, A minor, G, ignore minor and all that stuff. I look at my chart, there's a C right there, there's a D, there's an A, there's a G. And once I'm comfortable putting my index on the roots, then I add the power chord shape. So, so you think you can tell, you know? And that's it. You can play literally anything right away on day one. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is how to play a melody. Because chances are, if you're anything like me, you were drawn to electric guitar because you watched people playing really cool solos or really cool melodies on songs. And this all starts, you know, as a beginner with getting comfortable with the idea of playing higher notes on the guitar, like on those smaller frets with the thinner strings. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take our index finger and we're gonna go to the thinnest string all the way up to the eighth fret. And you can use those dots on your guitar to help you count. They're usually at three, five, seven. So one higher than that one, we get eight. And when we press the thinner strings, our thumb is gonna be higher on the neck. Well, generally when we press lower strings, like the thicker strings, 
my thumb is lower, and when I press the higher strings, my thumb goes higher. And we're gonna play the eighth fret, and then we're gonna add our ring finger to the 10th fret. Remember, we don't want our index finger to come up. And just try going eight, 10 a few times. And then we'll do the same thing on the B string. And at this point, you can, in the comfort of your own home with nobody watching, try to play a little bit of a guitar solo. We can just put on a backing track and then experiment with the notes. Take your time, experiment, nobody's watching. You know, this is the beginning of your melodic journey on guitar. Another thing you can do is that you can try to figure out the melody to a song. A good one that uses the same notes that we were just playing. You can do the melody for Come Together, you know, like, um, Here come old flat top, he come grooving up slowly, he got. You know, you can even start to just noodle around on guitar and find melodies by yourself, by ear, figure out how to play happy birthday, whatever, you know, you're, you're going to hit a lot of bad notes and that's normal. When you're learning how to juggle, you're going to drop the balls all the time until eventually you can keep them all in the air. You know, we're going to apply that same type of positive thinking to learning guitar and that's how you're going to succeed. Now, if you enjoy learning guitar with me, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to take this further and have me there to guide you the entire way from start to finish for your journey on electric guitar, I have a course, The Complete Lead Guitarist. It contains a bunch of video tutorials, a workbook, backing tracks, everything that you need. It's a full on journey from start to finish where every lesson builds on what we just learned one piece at a time until you become a confident electric guitar player. I'll put a link to that in the corner and down below if you'd like more information. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.